And joining us now in our uh, Book Talk segment, great to welcome. Man has written a book that asks some questions, provides some solutions, all about uh, the area era of education. It's called The End of College, Creating the Future of Learning and the University of Everywhere. We're joined today by uh, Kevin Carey by telephone up in Washington, D.C. And uh, Kevin, good to talk with you today. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to have a chance to uh, chat with you for a couple of minutes. I uh, had an opportunity to to read through the book, and uh, you, you answered some of my questions about uh, what, what the future of college is. Uh, uh, and, and where it's going, particularly now with uh, the internet and, 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 and that kind of thing. I, I guess a lot of people are asking that question, particularly with uh, so many uh, people in debt from uh, college loans, right? Yes. Yeah, more people um, owe money for college now than ever before. We have $1.2 trillion in outstanding student loan debt, uh, more than we owe in uh, all of our credit cards put together, which is pretty amazing considering how much people like to use credit cards. Um, the average student who graduates with debt, and about 70% do, owes $30,000, which is unprecedented in American history. Yeah, that's a scary number when you when you think uh, you, know, you graduate in four years, you've got $100,000 or more, in some cases a lot more, than uh, you owe off the bat, and you cases. may not have a job right away. Yeah, I think it's, um, and for a lot of people, it really, we're putting them behind the starting line in, in a very competitive uh, job market. So. Uh, owing that money restricts their ability to choose professions. It can make it harder for them to form a family, get a mortgage. Um, it is a big and growing problem. Yeah, I guess uh, you know if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, even though uh, you may have a lot of debt in the beginning, you're pretty well assured in most cases of, of, of I guess, getting a job right away and paying it back. But a lot of other jobs, uh, obviously not the case. So uh, it makes you, makes you think now. No. Do you tell your kids uh, go to college right away? Maybe work uh, and do both, work and go to school. People still need, um, people definitely still need some kind of credential other than a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. 30, 40 years ago in this country, um, you could earn a middle income, middle class income with just a high school diploma, but we don't live in that world anymore. Um, so, which is the reason that people have so much anxiety about going to college, because they want the best for their kids and they know that some kind of college education is necessary. At the same time, you can pay too much for college. You can choose a bad college. There are bad colleges out there. Um, so the stakes are higher for everybody. Yeah, I know a lot of people, and you talk about it in the book, you know, they still want to get the Ivy League education or maybe go out to Stanford or, you know, one of the big-name schools. And, and obviously those cost a, a lot more money than you know, your, your local community college. But you can get almost the same education uh, provided it's a decent school anywhere. Right? Well, I think, you know, that's kind of the interesting thing about where we're going. You can... I talk a lot in the book about how information technology is changing higher education. Um, Stanford, Harvard, MIT, uh, some of the world's best universities are now putting their own classes out on the Internet, full courses that anyone can take. I talk in the book about how I took an entire genetics class from MIT uh, alongside freshmen at MIT. Right. They were learning in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I was learning online. Um, so there are a lot of new possibilities, uh, but we're still working out how people are going to pay for that. And because we haven't yet, those costs are still going up. Yeah, I went to an event down here for my alma mater, uh, Adelphi University in Long Island. Somebody asked the, the president who was there uh, a question uh, about Adelphi is, you know, online. Are they going to go more to that? And he said, well, maybe for the graduate students, but undergrad, uh, they're not looking at that model. I guess a lot of colleges are thinking that way. If it's all online, uh, are these colleges going to you know, lose lose students and be more have more competition for, for their dollar? And I, you know, we don't. The thing is, we don't have to choose between a great residential experience and a cost-effective online education. And I, I very much think the future is going to be both. Um, people are always going to value those coming-of-age experiences, the socialization, learning, getting to you know, getting along with your roommate, learning to become an adult. Uh, people are always going to want to go away to college somewhere, but. Um, Someone doesn't need to cost $60,000 a year, which yeah. is what some private colleges are charging now. Um, and so the future is going to be a combination of great technology-enabled education and the things we value most in person. Yeah, I agree with you. A lot of college, at least when I went, uh, was learning to you know, work, work the system, meet people, that kind of thing. You don't necessarily get that when you're at home uh, learning on a computer. But, but then again, when you say 60000 bucks a year, uh, I might want to sit at home and save that money and, and, and learn the same thing uh, online. And also, I mean, a lot of college students are not 18 years old. Uh, right. Most college students are non-traditional in some way. They're, they're, uh, they're adults. They have families. They have jobs. Um, they're going to school part-time. They, they can't take four years out of their life. They don't want to. They need 
need more flexible options that actually um, work really well, provide a great education, provide the credentials they need, and don't cost an arm and a leg. From your research, Kevin, uh, you mentioned Harvard and some of the other you know, famous named universities are doing some online things. Is it, are college professors, and, or more appropriately, I guess, for college presidents, uh, seeing this as a good thing, or is this competition to them, or how do they feel about this? Where people would be able to do it, it online. It depends on the college. Yeah, it depends on the college. Um, I think MIT can give its courses away, and so can Harvard. Harvard has $35 billion in the bank and right. a, a fantastic brand name. People are always going to want to come there and sort of learn among the best and the brightest. I think that probably presidents and professors farther down the ladder of status that are at institutions that don't have the same financial resources, um, that don't have the prestige that goes along with those degrees, um, a lot of those institutions, you know, they, they're not that different from one another. They teach the same kinds of classes. Um, students major in the same kinds of things. As online education inevitably gets better and better and better, those institutions are going to have to really add more value with what they provide in person um, and make sure that the value they're adding um, is something that people can afford to pay if they're going to remain in business in the long term. Yeah, you talk about uh, MOOC, right? Massive Online Open uh, Courses. Is that, uh, is that something that's becoming more prevalent now or is it still in the beginning stages or how is that working? Well, it's, it's a piece of the puzzle. It's one piece. These massive open online classes became um, uh, well known a few years ago, there are uh, the class that I took that I talked about, the MIT class, is, is one of those classes, and there are thousands of them now that you can take from um, edX, edX.org, which is run by Harvard and MIT. There's a company called Coursera, um, a company called Udacity. All of them are developing these, these new courses, um, experimenting with new business models. A lot of times you take the course for free, but you might have to pay a small fee to get an official assessment um, so they can make sure that you are who you are, say you are, and they can make sure that you learned all the things that, um, that you learned in, in class. But that's, you know, that's, so it's not free, but it's also a whole lot less expensive than a year's tuition at a private school. Um, so a lot of these things are developing. We're very early on in this process of really figuring out exactly what we can do, even with the technology that we have, and we and the information technology we have is only going to get better in the future. I know when uh, Phoenix University, I don't know, I guess 10, 15 years ago now, if, if that long, came out with you know the totally online uh, education degrees and all that, uh, there was kind of a, a, a thought, well, if you take an online degree, it's not as good as uh, going to a school. I, I guess that's changing, but, but is that still, uh, still an issue? The thing is, you can have a great on online education and a terrible online education. You can have a great in-person education and a terrible in-person education. I think the mode of education is going to matter less in the future than the quality of the education. And we don't actually have a lot of quality control or really even understanding of what kind of college programs are good and aren't good. We need more of that transparency um, so that parents and consumers making choices can make smart choices um, and make sure that they're not overpaying and they're not going into a situation where they won't get what they need. High schools, from your uh, research, Kevin, uh, high school counselors and teachers kind of uh, open to uh, you know, be suggesting this as uh, options for similar students, or are they even talking about this uh, as an option? I th you know, I think they should be, although it, it depends a lot on the high school. There are certain certain kinds of schools that are still very caught up in, in the college admissions rat race and trying mm -hmm. to get everybody into the, quote, best schools, unquote. Um, but that's only ever been a limited number of people who could ever attend the elite schools. That's what it means to be an elite school. Um, for most people, it's, the question isn't, am I going to get into an Ivy League college? The question is, can I get an affordable degree um, that's going to provide me with a broad education, um, teach me how to think, and also provide me with uh, knowledge and skill that can lead me to a profession and a good job? Um, Given the level of debt that a lot of students are taking out and how, prob how problematic that is, uh, given how important it is, how high the stakes a decision it is, I think that high schools and counselors need to be um, aware of and make available all of the different options that are going to open up in the future, which won't just be traditional schools. Yeah. And, and the great thing, obviously, about uh, 
the internet and information age, uh, pretty much any bit of information is available to anybody, so there's no excuses anymore for not being able to uh, educate yourself. It's just a matter of, I guess, sorting it out as far as uh, you know, it, getting degrees and all that, how that's going to work, right? Well, and not just here in the United States, but around the world. Right. Uh, when I said I was learning with tens of thousands of other people, most of them weren't American, because you can get internet almost anywhere now. Um, and there's a real hunger for education in parts of the world where there, there are, we don't, they don't have anything like the infrastructure of colleges and universities. And so they're not choosing between the local community college and the local public university and the private college. They're choosing between online education and nothing. Mm -hmm. And so for them, this is really a boon and a blessing. Uh, these are also the, the, the people that our kids are going to be competing against in the global economy. And so um, they're going to get used to learning this way pretty quickly, and I think we, do, we need to also. Yeah, well, it's a fascinating book, a lot of great information, a lot of uh, food for thought as well. The End of College is the name of the book. We've been talking with uh, Kevin Carey uh, today. And uh, uh, Kevin, uh, do you want to direct people to a website? People get a hold of you with a book? Yeah, you can. The website is endofcollege.com, um, where there's more information about me and to the book. Great. Kevin, pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we can do it again, but uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to dougmilesmedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at dougmilesmedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.